Thank you. Merci. Good morning. Bonjour. Bonjour, Anine. Ambo Stitch, fellow laureates, colleagues, and dear guests. Thank you so much for welcoming Kayla and I here today on the traditional and ancestral lands of the Algonquin and the Anishinaabe people. It's an honor to be recognized for our work on the HEROES project and to have the opportunity to share it with you at today's Canada History Forum. Jen and I are both teachers at Exhaus School. I'll show you what it looks like. It's a K-8 public school of about 200 students and it's nestled in Alberta's beautiful Rocky Mountains. This is the traditional home and territory of the Stony Nakoda Nations. My name is Genevieve, and I am the school's success teacher, and I love my job. I really feel I have the best job on the planet, really, but I have the honor of working with students, families, elders, and knowledge keepers in order to make learning culturally relevant, engaging, and meaningful for our students at our school. I attempt to create space in our school for voices, opportunities, language, and stories that have not always been welcomed in Canadian schools. We want our students to know the power in their history, their stories, the power of the people, and the strength that has always been found in the community and in the culture. I, along with other passionate educators like Kayla, am committed to bringing the Truth and Reconciliation Calls to Action alive every day in our school. This is my third year at the school as a grade four teacher. And these are the wonderful grade four students that I taught last year. Um, at the end of every day, we have our cheer. And last year, the students decided it would be, we're grade four, hear us roar. Yes. So we incorporated that up there. Um, so last November, Jen and I began working on the Heroes Project. And our goal was to design an authentic learning opportunity for students that extended beyond the classroom. We really wanted to design a task that they, they could be more engaged with the Alberta Social Studies curriculum on a deep level. And we were really inspired by the words of former National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations, Phil Fontaine, at a speech he gave to our staff at our opening day in September. He encouraged us to find heroes that children can identify with and to look for local stories that haven't been told. The following news clip does a fantastic job of outlining how our project came to life. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission released its report in 2015, but many critics complain little has been done to follow through. But in a small school at the foot of the Rocky Mountains, a grade four project is proving that not only can it be done, the impact can be transformational. Here's Jefferson Humphreys. My hero is John Chinicki. He is my great, 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 great grandfather, and he signed Treaty 7. His original Cree name is Chinikai. My hero is Te Ofa. He is my great, great, great grandpa. My hero is Joe Kootenai Sr. My hero is Lily Baptiste. My hero's name is Moses Bear. When school started, these nine-year-old kids at Exshaw School knew very little about their roots. And some of these kids, even their parents, did not know about who their relatives were. The Heroes Project changed all that. Teacher Kayla Dallin and Amy Park from the U of C's Galileo Network began a year-long initiative to help these kids find a hero. They're just bombarded with heroes, but they're not from their community. They don't see themselves in those people. To do it, they approached the community's elders who helped piece together the past. The impact was immediate. Their eyes just lit up. Um, all of a sudden, they're now thinking about their history. This is who we were before. Now I've got to learn more about who I am. And it's about finding their identity. And in the Ibanez, related to a shaman with supernatural powers. 
students carefully reconstructed family trees. When they got to learn about Indigenous heroes from their own family, you could just see it in them. They sat up a little straighter. They looked directly at the elders instead of staring at the floor. They just, their whole demeanor changed. And it wasn't just the students who reconnected with their roots. Oh, that was uh, unbelievable. It was unbelievable because we, we as Nakoda are an oral group. We have oral traditions, and uh, for a time there, we lost some of that teaching, that oral teaching. Let's give our children back what they've lost, what we've lost through the residential school, is reconciling them with the past. Then, renowned Canadian artist Christine Wignall helped the children bring their heroes to life. They shaped and painted busts of their ancestors and shared their work at Arts Place Gallery in Canmore. I had the opportunity to meet Kayla in October. Proud educators and elders also learned a few things along the way. They've worked all year on this project and if you have high expectations for kids and you support them, they can do anything and they prove that. It felt really good to pass on what myself and the other knowledge keepers have known to her grandchildren, and it felt wonderful. And the exhibition runs through the long weekend at Arts Place in Canmore. This project truly started with small stories and big ideas. We wanted to share personal stories that had not been told and to design a learning opportunity that would engage students in a meaningful way. In doing so, we were able to provide students with a unique opportunity to connect community, culture, and curriculum. Through the HEROES project, students engaged in authentic truth and reconciliation work and developed a deeper sense of pride and identity. The theme of this panel is making personal stories big. In keeping with that theme, we would like to close by sharing the words of some of the elders and the knowledge keepers who worked on this project. Unfortunately, we worked with a team of some days 12 elders, um, eight knowledge keepers. It was a really, for me as a, as a teacher, to work in that kind of collaborative environment was something so unique and so truly inspiring. And I'm, I'm really saddened today to not have them all here with us. So you saw, and you saw Fred and Sykes there, and there's Cor Lee Powderface in the bottom corner. And you're gonna meet three more of the elders that, that worked with us. Um, and the children, and, and for, for me and for Kayla, it was really important to have their voices here with us today and, and to close off our session. Um, this project created a space for them to share their personal stories, their histories, and their culture in a way that they hadn't been invited to do so in schools before. So here in this next clip, we'll have Elder Virgil Stevens, Elder Philomene Stevens, and Knowledge Keeper Tracy Stevens share the impact of this experience and what it meant to them as individuals and, and their community. My name is Virgil Stevens, and I'm a Stony, member, Stony Band member, Border Reserve. It's very important for our young generation to learn about history. I have learned from my parents and other older people about my history, like telling stories, sharing stories. It is very important that we know who we are and learn about history. And today, it's a great day for me to say a few words so that our children, our community, can learn more going to a public school. And I thank you. Tracy Stevens, Mangyabits. Stony Nakoda Nation, the Mada Hansat. Ham Chaji Jinx, Song Stich Nehna, Mangyabits. Hitcher Ne Inaje It, Inaje Nora Stevens, Ejabits. Aktua Jinx, Song Aktu. Adejane John Stevens Ejabits. 
Ham Chaji Jin Sik Dahni Hna Ijabi Chichen Hunguaj Ne in A Tungakshi Jujita Osa Age Hereditary Chief Hitchat in Peter Wesley Hitchen Akduaji John Stevens Age Je Tungakshi Juaj Dam is Paul Amos Ijabich Ham Chaji Jin Sik Togeja Hne Hna Ijabich Je nek da tibin klan, nek da tibin je da han chach. Ta u jabinane, ne min ta gojan he chach, she li e diab chach. Ingi ta u jabinane, uns no hiabish in jenanch duk da han hi ubi he je. He chach to gada pagia ya bik dene, oshkan shi abish in chien e inge chimich. It's very important to tell our young generation to know where they were who their origins are, where they come from, because that way they will have, they will have understanding of everything and they will have a better life in the future. My name is Philomene Stevens, Makotunya. I'm from the Stony Nakoda First Nations. The Heroes Project is carrying on our culture teaching it's, it's our education. Recognizing Nakoda Stony heroes is a healing for the community and the identity of who we are. Now it can be carried on in the future. So the children were so excited to find out who their grandparents, great-grandparents were. It really lifts their spirits. It's a reawakening of who we are, a reawakening of the community. My name is Virgil Stevens. Thank you. Pina Mach, I'm so grateful for this work and the opportunity to work with all of our friends and the children and, and especially Kayla. It's been an honor to be a part of this project. Thank you for having us here today to share our story.